We talked a lot about formal concepts and concept lattices. Now let's talk about how we can compute them from formal context. Well, actually there are a lot of ways to compute them. We're not going to cover all of them. We're not, we're not even going to cover the most efficient ones. But we'll cover a few that work reasonably well. Let's start with an intuitively clear technique and we'll illustrate it on a formal con context. So this is a formal context of triangles. We have seven triangles and five attributes. A triangle um, can be equilateral, like T4. Uh, this means it has all, all its sides are equal. Um, this is attribute A. Attribute B is isosceles. So some of the triangles have two sides or at, at least two sides equal. Uh, like this one, for instance. This is attribute B. Attribute C is acute angled, which means that all angles are acute, like for T3. Obtuse angled triangles have an obtuse angle, like T5, and uh, right angled triangles have a right angle, like T7. So this is our formal context. Let's compute its concept lattice. Um, well, we'll start by computing concept extents. Once we have a concept extent A, we can compute the corresponding concept intent easily using the context. The corresponding intent is just A prime. So let's start with extents. And we'll compute intents later. And then we'll also draw a line diagram. Some extents are easier to compute than others. Um, let's start with attribute extents. We have five attributes, and each attribute defines each attribute defines an attribute extent. So the first extent E1 is going to be the attribute extent of A, A prime, and uh, this is the set of all objects that have all attributes from the set. So all objects that have attribute A, and there's just one such object T4. So E1 is uh, uh, the set consisting of T4. E2 is uh, B prime. Uh, so which objects have B? T1, T2, T4, T6. T1, T2, T4, and T6. For E3, we have C prime, and this is a T3, T4, and T6. E3, oh sorry, this was E3, and now E4. E4 is a D prime, and this is a all objects that have D, T1 and T5. E5 is E prime and that's T2 and T7. Okay, so these are attribute extents. There are other concepts, concepts that have different extents. But the basic theorem tells us that all other concept extents can be represented as intersections of attribute extents. This is because the set of attribute concepts is infimum dense in the concept lattice. So all we need to do now is to compute the intersections, all possible intersections of attribute extents. Let's start by computing pairwise intersections. So E6, um, it could be the intersection of E1 and E2, but E1 intersection E2 is T4, and T4 is already on the list, so we will not write it down. It may happen that some of the extents that are on the list are intersections of other extents. In this case, we don't write them. So, let's intersect E1 and E3. 
we'll get t4 again, so we don't need this. Intersect e1 and e4, and we get the empty set, which is not on the list yet. So e6 is going to be the intersection of e1 and e4, and that's empty. Now, e1 intersection e5 gives us the empty set, but we already have it, so we ignore it. Now, e2 intersection e3 is uh, t4, t6, and we don't have it, so let's write it out. So, e7 is e2 intersection e3, and this is t4. E6. E2 intersection E4 gives us T1, which is also new. So this is going to be E8. E8 is E2 intersection E4, and it's T1. Um, E2 intersection E5 is T2, and that's also new. So E9 is E2, intersection E5, and this gives us T2. Good. Um, now, E3, intersection E4 is empty, we already have it. E3, intersection E5 is uh, empty, we already have it. E4, intersection E5 is empty, we already have it. Um, so then we could also continue to intersect these sets together, but you might check that we'll get nothing new. So basically that's all the extents except for the one which we always have. It's the extent that contains all objects. And because we haven't obtained it as the intersection of every bit extents, well, let's add it explicitly. So E10 is the set of all objects. So, so it's t1, t2, t3, t4, t5, t6, and t7. Well, formally, this arid extent is the infimum of the empty set, but mm, it's not that important for us. We always need this um, extent, the extent that contains all objects, so if we don't get it at any of the previous steps, we just add it explicitly to our list. Okay, so these are extents, and to get the concepts, we also need to compute intents. But we know that for any set A, which is a subset of G, we have that a prime is uh, the set of all attributes shared by all objects from A. And if A is, an is a concept extent, then A prime is the corresponding concept intent. But what is this set? Well, here we compute the set of all attributes shared by all objects from A. But we can do this as follows. We can look at the objects from A and intersect the corresponding object intents. So let me write this down. It's going to be, we look at all objects in A and we compute the intersection of the intents. And that's how we can compute the intents corresponding to the extents we've just computed. Let's do this. So these are our extents, and let's look at intents. So the first extent, E1, has only one object, T4, so the corresponding intent is ABC. The second extent, E2, uh, has four objects, T1, T2, T4, T6, and we can compute the corresponding intent by intersecting the rows corresponding to T1, T2, T4, and T6. So for T1 we have BD, 
42 will have BE, so we intersect and we get B. Then T4 also has B and T6 also has B. So here the intersection, this intersection equals B. Uh, for E3, we get C intersection ABC, intersection BC, and this is C. For E4, we get T1 prime intersection T5 prime, and this is D. For E5, uh, we get T2 prime intersection T7 prime, and that's going to be E. Well, when A is empty, A prime is always the set of all attributes, because empty set doesn't contain any object that doesn't have attribute A. It doesn't contain any object that doesn't have attribute B, and so on. So, every attribute from M satisfies this property if A is empty. So here we have M, the set of all attributes. A, B, C, D, E. E7 is the intersection of uh, object intents of T4 and T6, and this is B, C. For E8, we get the object intent of T1, which is B, D. And for E9, uh, E9 is T2, so we have B, E. And for the tenth concept, we need to look at attributes that are shared by all objects, and we don't have any such attributes. So here, the corresponding concept intent is empty. And this is the list of our formal concepts.